Okay, this is uh, section B electricity, and this the third part, current and voltage in circuits. This is a, a really important topic which you really must understand. It's very important. So um, we're going to look at charge and the charge equation Q is IT. Uh, we'll look at voltage, um, what voltage is, and we'll have a brief look at series and parallel circuits. So we'll start by um, using this. I'll draw a really large circle on this to illustrate. Uh, what is happening in a circuit. So if we take, um, let's make a larger circuit so we can see it. If we take a battery and we'll add some we'll add a wire to the battery and uh, We'll have just a very, very simple circuit, so we'll just have a very simple series circuit. Okay, so. Here we have a battery, and inside the conducting wire we have these small blue balls. Now those balls are coulombs. Now the coulombs are the charged particles which are moving around the circuit. Now when they pass through the battery, the battery, which pushes them along, the battery gives each coulomb, each single coulomb, energy. Now if, for example, the battery is a 9 volt battery, then every time a coulomb goes into the battery, the battery will give it 9 joules of energy. It's the voltage of the battery is how many joules it gives each coulomb as it enters the battery. So if we think about a single coulomb, it comes in with no energy at all, picks up, 9 joules of energy because it's a 9 volt battery and it comes around here and it comes to the bulb and when it comes to the bulb it comes in with its 9 joules because the bulb is the only thing in the circuit it gives all of its 9 joules to the bulb and comes out with nothing it goes back to the battery and gets it again now if we add a voltmeter to this circuit we can see this battery is a 9 volt battery. So that means the potential difference between the two sides of the battery is 9 volts. It means that they had none when they came in and now they've got 9. And if we look at the voltage drop across the bulb, we see again it's 9 volts because they've lost nine joules of energy as they pass through the light bulb and obviously that energy went from electrical energy into heat and light in the light bulb. Now it's really important to realize that the rate at which these coulombs flow is the electrical current which is measured in amps. So the current is the number of coulombs passing a point every second. So I, the current, is the charge divided by time. For example, if two coulombs pass my finger every second, that's two coulombs every second, that would be two amps. The current would be two amps. The number of coulombs every second. Okay? So the or the charge, number of coulombs, Q is IT. Current times time is the number of coulombs. Okay, so the coulombs, these blue balls, pick up energy here, drop it off here. But there are different sorts of circuit you could then draw. So using this, you could then look at other types of circuits, so we can look at series and parallel circuits. So if we were to look at um, 
a series circuit, we can see that the current everywhere in the circuit is the same. So we'll draw a smaller circuit this time, so we'll have our battery. And if we draw If we draw our simple circuit, and apologies this one's uh, much smaller, now we could put into this circuit, we could put an ammeter, so if we take an ammeter and I put it in there, that will show me the current that's flowing. Again, sorry, it's probably quite small. And I can put another ammeter at the top here. And what we'll see is that the current in a series circuit where there's only one possible path, the current is the same everywhere in the circuit because there's only one possible path. The voltage picks up 9 joules each, drops them off. Now if we had two bulbs here, the current would be the same everywhere, but the voltage would be shared between them because as it picks up its nine joules it would come along it would give this four and a half it would give the next one four and a half and then it would go back to the battery so if they're in series they would share the voltage as the coulomb comes in it would give half to one half to the other but if we look at a parallel circuit we need to look at how the current will split so if we were to add another bulb but this time we had it in parallel we can see and again I'll add another ammeter Now then, we can see now that the rate of flow of the coulombs at the top, the current, is 1.8 amps. That means there are 1.8 coulombs flowing past each point per second. But when they come to here, we can see that they split. Half go this way and half go this way. So if we see the speed here, it's greatly reduced. They split and they go over to this side and they meet up again and add together. So we see then that the current goes from 1.8 and it splits 0.9 here, 0.9 here. Then they come back, add together again to make 1.8. So we can see that in a parallel circuit, the current splits. So the current splits because one coulomb goes one way, one coulomb goes the other, one coulomb goes the other, and one goes the other. However, the potential difference or voltage does not split in a parallel circuit. It splits in series, but it does not split in parallel because if you think about a coulomb coming through the battery, it picks up nine joules of energy. But when it comes around here, it's got a choice. It can go down this path and back to the battery, or it can go down this path and back to the battery. It cannot go down both. It's got to pick one or the other. So if it comes along with its nine joules of energy, if it goes down here, it will give all nine joules to this one and back again. If it goes down here, it gives all nine joules to this one and back again. Therefore, the potential difference across each branch in a parallel circuit is the same. Potential difference across here is the same as the potential difference across here. In a series circuit, 
if you have the two bulbs next to each other, only then does the voltage split where the coulomb would give them half each of its energy and it would be four and a half each. But in parallel, the voltage is the same across every branch, which is why in a parallel circuit, because they've all got the same potential difference and because the more branches you add, the more current comes out the battery, that's why uh, batteries would go flat much quicker in a parallel circuit. You also need to know about, very simply, if different parts of a circuit were to break, what would happen? So, for example, if we, if we uh, removed, say, this part of the circuit, what would happen? And you need to know, obviously, that this, because the electricity can't get back and make a complete circuit, this would go off. Another interesting thing worthy of note is, if you were to short circuit it, so offer a path with no resistance, so if you offered this path, for example, then because you've got a path with no resistance, all the current would flow this way. You've got an enormous current because we've short circuited it now, and therefore it breaks. Okay, this is this is sort of an example you could use uh, when you're thinking about uh, why earth wires are useful, safety wires in a plug if it's short circuits because uh, your fuse melts. So here you can see if there is a path with no resistance, the electricity will obviously use that path as opposed to the bulbs. Okay?